we will be talking about type expressions. So, type expression uh, as the name suggests, so this is an expression of types. Okay. So, uh, instead of uh, it is being the uh, type of expressions, so I will read it as expression is the involving types. So, it is used to represent types of language constructs. So, we will make an expression whose individual elements will be some types and they will be utilized for, um, uh, for uh, representing types of different programming language constructs. So, type expression, so it can have basic type like any expression can, can have the basic uh, IDs, identifiers and some operands and all. So, like here also for type expression, so there can be some basic types which are similar to uh, which are uh, uh, synonymous to identifiers in a normal expression. So, if I have got a normal expression, so there, there are uh, some ID, identifiers are there and some operators are there. So, in case of type expressions, so these IDs are basically the types themselves. So, this is basic types, the basic types, so they will be the ID. So, basic type like integer, real, character, boolean and other atomic types that do not have internal structure. So, like a programming language, so that can define like what are the basic types that are supported by it and they, so maybe some programming language will support bit as a uh, type. So, so the, 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 the basic type are those types which cannot be broken down further, they are atomic you can say. So, they are uh, you cannot uh, break an integer into further types. So, okay. so, that is the thing. So, that if it is the case then the, that will be called a basic type. So, the, what is a basic type? So, uh, for example, what about say string? So, if I say a string, so is it a basic type? Now, the answer depends uh, on the programming language. Like somebody may say yes string is not a basic type because I can uh, I can break this string into characters. So, this a b c d if it is a uh, if it is a string, so I have got this a b c d as individual characters in it. So, I can see that there are characters inside it, but seeing that there are characters inside it does not say that this uh, this is uh, this is not a basic type. Why am I saying so? Like given a string so, if there is an operator by which I can extract the individual characters and assign it to uh, the I can I can access this individual characters uh, as characters only. So, if I can do that in that case I will say that string is not a basic type, but if it is such that on string you can only do operations like screen concatenation, string copy then uh, 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 then uh, string reversal and all that. So, only those type of operands are allowed but you cannot uh, extract the individual characters for, from the string. So, if you cannot do that, so in that case string also happens to be a basic type. So, that that is what, what I want to mean is that the definition of basic type is more on this atomicity behavior. So, is some, if you cannot break the type further, then I will call it as an as a basic type. So, this integer most of the programming languages they will be using this basic type. And there is another special type which we will call type error, so which is used to indicate type violation. So, if I have got an expression of type, so what is uh, what is its type? So, suppose I have got uh, uh, say an integer, so I say that int x. So, when I am trying to derive the type of this x, so I am telling its type is integer, fine. Now, if it at some place, uh, suppose there is a variable y whose type is not known, then its type is unknown and if I am trying to do an operation like say x equal to y plus z, then what is the type of this expression y plus z? So, y plus z I cannot do because I do not know the type of y, maybe z is of type integer, but for type y I do not know what is the type. So, in that case type of this whole expression will be marked as type error. So, that uh, you, you can, uh, so it is not confused to be either integer or something like that, but my uh, process can continue, my compilation process can continue. So, when I am trying to compare uh, this type of x with the type of this expression, I see that this expression is of type type error and this uh, x is of type integer. So, naturally this assignment cannot be done. So, there is a type mismatch. 
So, the compiler designer can uh, detect this situation. So, this uh, type error is a another basic type. So, apart from the basic types like integer, real, character, boolean, etc. So, we will also have type error as another basic type. So, it can be a the name of a type. So, may, maybe we do define a new type and then uh, um, uh, that is a uh, uh, type name. So, I, I define that okay, uh, say for many uh, programming languages they will allow this type def. So, type def a b c integer. So, this means that I am defining a new type whose name is a b c and whose uh, values contained will be the value the value values will be same as the type integer. So, so this uh, so this is a this is a type name. So, I am giving a type name a b c whose uh, type is actually wh which is actually integer, but I can define uh, a variable uh, x to be of type a b c and I can have another variable y of type integer. Now, when I am writing x equal to y whether it is an error or not whether this is a type error or not that is a question. So, some programming language may be very strictly typed. So, it will say yes it is a type mismatch because a b c x is of type a b c and y is of type integer. So, the strongly typed languages so they will say this is a type error whereas, for the, the languages which are more flexible. So, it will try to uh, look through for look further and see that they are derived from the same basic type integer. So, as a result this uh, dev assignment may be true. So, it is programming language dependent. So, uh, so, that is the type name and type constructor applied to a list of type expressions. So, list of type expressions like I can say uh, many programming languages like say uh, you can have this structure definition. So, structure a b c and there you can have different types. So, integer uh, some field may be there integer a integer b character c. So, like that we are defining as types. Uh, uh, so, this uh, uh, so this is a constructor. So, a list of types. So, it is it is collection of one integer, two integer and one character. So, integer, integer and character they are combined together uh, to it is a list of type expressions are uh, taken together to get the uh, this constructor structure. Similarly, I can have say the integer a 100. So, when I am saying this then I am telling that so this a 100 is a new type where which is our array of integers. So, array of integers this whole thing is a new type like so, uh, so, uh, uh, so this uh, actually you should uh, read it like this uh, uh, this expression though we are we may most of the programming languages we read it like this, but in reality it is like this integer 100 and that is a as if this integer 100 is the type. So, array of 100 integers taken together and I am defining a variable a of this type. So, you should read it in this fashion though for the sake of our understanding we write in this form, but it is like this. So, uh, similarly if I have got uh, something like this. So, inti uh, say integer a 100 and b 50. Now, you see that can I write uh, a equal to b? Okay, I cannot because there is a type mismatch here. What is the type mismatch? So, actually this a is of type integer 100. So, this is the type of a and the type of b is actually integer 50. So, it is b is a variable which is of type which is collection of 50 integers and a is a variable of type which is a collection of 100 integers. So, uh, this is also a constructor. So, this is an array constructor we, can, we say. So, this is constructing an array of 100 integers. This is constructing a type of array of 50 integers and this a and b. So, they are variables of this individual types. So, we cannot uh, do the assignment. So, the, it will be stopping as at type error. Now, some pro so if they are of same type like if this is also say 100 
instead of that. So, this is also 100. Then in that case A and B both are of same type. So, this is also 100. So, both of them are of type integer 100. So, in that case A equal to B is a feasible operation. So, many programming languages do allow this array, uh, uh, array assignment directly. So, it will be doing element to element uh, allocation. So, uh, element to element copy, but it is allowed in the some programming languages. So, but uh, this type has to be same. So, this way this type becomes very critical. So, it is uh, just uh, by looking into the um, uh, program. So, we cannot say that okay, they, this is they, they are whether this uh, types are correct or not. So, it is very much defined by the underlying programming language uh, semant uh, so that uh, semantics like whatever is given there. So, next we will be looking into this thing that so arrays are specified as array i t where t is the type and i is an integer or a range of integer. For example, uh, so this is basically so that that is what I was telling that integer a 100 is nothing but uh, integer a 100 is nothing but is a type uh, type of a is array 100 integer. So, it is written like this array uh, it is a constructor array and uh, 100 such integers are taken together to give this thing. Now, we have got this thing that if t 1 and t 2 they are two type expressions then this t 1 cross t 2 it represents anonymous records. So, for example, when you are passing an argument list uh, to a function with the first argument integer or second real has type integer cross real. So, what I mean is suppose uh, I have got a uh, program and at this point I am calling the function uh, say function 1 and there I am passing two values a and b. Okay. And here in the function, the function is like this. So, here int m and uh, say float n and there I have written the function. Now, I need to check that when I am calling this function func 1 from this uh, point. So, the parameters that I am passing is really matching with the uh, argument, the arguments that I am passing here is really matching with the parameters that I have here in the function. Now, how do I do this thing? So, uh, actually uh, the way we are doing is we are checking this a matching is this a with the first argument, uh, first parameter matching the type of b with the second parameter like that. But formally speaking, so what are we doing? So, the, if, I, if I say that the for this is a type expression, so the, then this type expression is given by of type t1 cross t2, where t1 is the type of the first uh, parameter and uh, the first argument and t2 is the type of the second argument. As a result, this gives me a new type which is the cross product of uh, these uh, uh, two types uh, t1 and t2 and then and then then what is the type of this so this is nothing but a type t dash which is again t1 cross t2 and then this t1 and t2 so this is uh, this is integer and this is float so t dash that we have here is a type integer cross float so here also this t should must be integer cross float then only I can say that these two types are matching otherwise not. So, this way formally this parameter uh, passing technique that we have that is also uh, we have to check for the arguments and we do this thing. So, um, some programming languages where it is uh, where you have to do this type checking. So, they, they will do it like this some programming languages will say no I am free. So, you can pass uh, any arbitrary uh, arguments. So, that is uh, that is possible. So, uh, then this checking is not done. So, this type construction is also not done. But anyway, so if for most of the programming languages, so it will do this type checking and uh, this will be required. Next, we will see like uh, the named record. So, how does a record will look like? So, named record, so they are products with uh, uh, no named elements for a record structure with two named fields length and word the record is of type length into integer length cross integer cross word 
cross array of 10 uh, character. So, so this is the, this actually telling me that I have got a record say for example, if you look into the C programming language. So, this is uh, defined a structure where the first field is uh, 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 first field is it has got a name length and this is an integer. So, integer length and the, uh, and the second field is word which is of array 10. Uh, so, it is like character word 10. So, this is the structure. Now, what is the type of this structure? So, that that is what we uh, try to figure out. So, its type is depicted by this particular type expression. So, it is uh, color it is length cross integer. So, length is of type length uh, is of type integer. So, length into integer because length is a um, uh, the name of the field and integer is its corresponding type and this is word is the length name of the field and it is an array of 10 characters. So, this product. Now, uh, what it means is that this if I have got another structure say structure. So, integer instead of length so I call it say length and uh, instead instead of word I call it say wd. Now, whether these two structures are these two types are same or not. So, this is also a type def, this is also a type def in from C language. So, they both of them are defining types. So, are these two types same or not? Now, uh, the, as far as this definition is concerned, these types are not same because here it says that it should be length cross some integer value, but here it is len cross some integer value. So, they are not same. Similarly, this is word cross array 10 character, but here it is wd cross array 10 cross character. So, not 10 character. So, naturally, so they are not equivalent if I go by this thing. But of course, if you go further, so you can see you can say that okay, this len and length, so they are actually equivalent because they are both of them are integers, and then this wd and word, so they are also equivalent because both of them are character arrays of 10 entries. So, that way I can say that they are equivalent, but it, it, it requires more work. Okay? So, the, if the type checker has to do this type of checking, then the work involved is more. So, in most of the cases what happens is that we stop at this level itself, telling that uh, these two types are not equivalent. Okay? So, we will come to this when we go to the type checking in more detail. So, uh, so this is the named record, how are they, uh, how their types are derived, so that is mentioned here. And also, you can have a pointer. So, pointer uh, no, it, 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 if t is a type expression, then pointer t is also a type expression that represents objects that are pointers to objects of type t. So, this pointer t is also, this is also a type expression whose type, uh, so this will represent uh, objects that are pointer to objects of type t. And a function maps a collection of types to another representing d to r, where d is the domain and r is the range of the function. So, for example, if I have got a c function like integer say f 1 is the name of the function and it takes uh, um, parameters like say integer x character y float z. Then, so it finally returns some integer value as the type of the f1 is integer. So, it returns some integer say m, fine. Then d is the domain. So, domain says that from which, uh, which uh, set it can pick up the values. So, it can pick up the values. So, so from the domain which is integer. integer cross character cross integer cross float. So, this is the domain because it can take up values 
from this domain. So, in the how is this domain? So, this domain is collection of 3 entries where the first entry is an integer, second entry is a character and the third entry is a float. Okay. So, this is D and this range is the output of the function, the output type is integer. So, you can say that given 3 values of this type, one is in one integer, one character and one float the or the rather the first one integer, second one character, third one float, this ordering really matters. So, it will be outputting an integer. So, this is the type of the function. So, if I tell what is the type of the function, so type of the function is this thing. So, it takes uh, parameters integer, uh, first parameter integer, second parameter character, third parameter float and it outputs one integer value. So, that way, so function maps a collection of types to another represented by d to r where d is the domain and r is the range of the function. So, we can uh, we can uh, represent these functions like that. Now, uh, once we do this, then the next one. So, uh, for so this is another example like say integer cross integer to character. So, this type expression it will represents a function that takes two integers as arguments and returns a character value. So, that is uh, one possibility. Then the type expression integer to real to character. So, this represents a function that takes an integer as an argument and returns another function which maps a real number to a character. So, this is uh, like this that uh, so, is, uh, if, I, if I look into this one more carefully. So, this, uh, this is a, this is uh, um, uh, this is basically that function pointer type of concept that you have in many programming languages like C. So, what the function does is the function 1. So, it takes uh, uh, an integer value integer x and depending on the value of x it will return some other function return some other function f 2. So, where which, which will be taking a real number and it will be returning the character. So, this returns the, uh, so it will be, it, it, so it will return the function f 2 such that it takes uh, some real number say, it will take some real number okay. and this f 2 will be. So, this is often written like this so to tell that f 2 is a function pointer. So, like that. So, this is a po function pointer. So, it depends the sint syntax depends on the programming language that you are looking into, but essentially what I mean is that given the value of x it will return some function. Maybe if x equal to 1 it will return the function f 1, if x equal to 2 it will uh, return the function f 2. So, like that as a return value it does not return a single uh, value, but it returns another function and that function that it is returning is of type like this. So, this function f 1 given a real value it will produce a character or the function f 2 given a real value it will produce a character. So, this way this uh, function pointers uh, can also be taken care of in the type expression. So, this of course, makes it uh, a bit complex, but it can be taken care of there. Now, what is a type system? So, type system of a language is a collection of rules depicting the type expression assignments to program objects. So, so if you look into the programming language manual, then apart from giving the grammar that has got uh, how this individual constructs of the grammar will be, uh, will be uh, there, uh, how are they organized, what is the grammar for that. So, it will also tell you like how, what are the types Okay, which types are allowed and all. So, it will give you all those details. So, that gives rise to a type system. So, type system it is a collection of rules that will depict the type expression assignment to uh, assignments to program objects and usually done with syntax directed definition. So, this type checking and type conversion. So, they are often done in the syntax directed translation phase itself. So, and we will see how this can be done and type checker is an implementation of the type system. So, as a compiler designer, so we also have to include a type checker. So, it is not only that we generate code or uh, do some uh, syntax directed translation to do something else. So, that is there, but apart from that, so you also need to have some uh, type checking uh, rules and those type checking rules are also 
to be made part of this, um, uh, this, uh, um, this syntax directed translation phase. So, that will be known as type checker. So, this is more difficult if the language is strongly typed then this type checker will be more complex. If the language is relatively simple then the type checker will also be a bit simple. So, what is a strongly typed language? So, strongly typed language so compiler can verify that the program will execute without any type errors. So, this is the most important like the compiler. So, if the, the strongly typed language, so if the compiler says yes, the program is correct syntactically and semantically correct, then uh, uh, so it will be it is telling that the program will not give uh, those type of bugs or those type of uh, problems while executing, it will not come up with some type error. So, it is not that there is an assignment like x equal to y and while executing, so it will be coming up with a statement that uh, there is a type mismatch and that is why there is a there is an error in the program. Of course, the logical bugs may be there in the program that cannot be captured by any compiler, but uh, so where there is type related issues are there. So, that can be detected by the compiler itself and once the compiler certifies that the program is uh, correct from the type point of view. So, there cannot be any problem uh, during execution. All checks are made statically. So, they are uh, before the program is run uh, before the code is generated all the checks are done and this is also called a sound type system because uh, uh, because it is strongly typed so everything is known everything is fixed so this is called a sound type system so it completely eliminates the necessity of dynamic type checking so of course uh, so uh, so that dynamic type checking will not be necessary because everything will be checked statically of course that array bounds check that we have talked about so it cannot be uh, done at uh, at uh, say at the uh, compilation time or the statically but if that array bounds check is not there then of course uh, i don't need to do it dynamically so uh, if the language does not require this array bounds check then i can say that okay it will be it it it, it, it does not require any dynamic type checking most programming languages are weakly typed they are they are not strongly typed because strongly typed means for every uh, small small things so you have to uh, you have to have uh, this type uh, uh, things taken care of so uh, the, uh, the programmers will also find uh, that many things are too trivial and the too trivial things are also not taken care of like that may be the situation so like uh, so that uh, that creates a difficulty so that's why most programming languages they are uh, weakly type and this strong uh, strongly type languages put lot of restrictions on the programmer so we will see that if there are a lot of restrictions uh, so the strongly type language so it, it will not allow you to do arbitrary assignment and operations so as a result it is like that for example uh, uh, so if i have got uh, say uh, say this uh, x equal to y plus z then this if y is of type float and z is of type integer so a strongly typed language will not allow you to do this addition. But you see that we can do this addition because the, the we can always uh, take it as a floating point addition and do the addition. So, if it is a strongly typed language then everything has to be uh, everything has to be very uh, crucial. This uh, another very um, uh, subtle example may be like this suppose I want to write like x equal to y by 2 where x and y both of them are of type float. But while I am writing like this y by 2, this 2 is a 2 is an integer and this y is a floating point number. So, you see now there is a type mismatch because the two operands involved in the uh, division operation they are not of same type. So, it requires that the programmer writes it as y by 2.0 not as 2. So, that this type of funny things can come up. Okay? So, that is why if you make it very strongly typed, so it can give rise to many problems for the programmer also. So, uh, this uh, this strongly typed languages uh, they are uh, they are not uh, this uh, type checking does not is not made so strong. So, there are cases where this type error can be caught dynamically only. So, this is a typical situation is like that array bounds check that I was talking about and many languages also allow the users to override the system. So, uh, like the, the type casting, type coercion, so those are there. So, we will see that uh, in subsequent uh, classes. 
So, there uh, we can override this uh, type system and say the programmer uh, says that okay, no this type assignment is correct. For example, in uh, C language, so if I have got this thing, so y equal to say this x and x and y are of two different types, then say maybe x is say uh, integer and y is say uh, float. So, we may often write like y equal to int x. Okay. So, that this will be overriding the uh, rule that y uh, the integer cannot get the value of a float. So, if you do this that, that means this x is converted to integer and then only it is assigned. So, this type of uh, um, uh, overriding may be possible in the strongly typed language. So, with uh, this many programming languages they will bypass this strongly typed uh, concepts by having these extra things in the language itself.